Hey there, welcome to this lesson where we'll talk about how to improve mental health and specifically through the lens of three major brain networks. So throughout the day, the brain is often in one of two modes. It usually toggles back and forth between what I call doing mode and thinking mode. And I'll talk about the brain networks that are involved in this in a moment, but just think of doing mode for a second as focusing on something external or outside of yourself. So for example, like if you were writing or typing on the computer, this would be doing mode. The thinking mode is kind of obvious. It's when you're planning or remembering, but you're kind of lost in your thoughts. You're caught up in what you're thinking about. There's a third mode that's available to us and we'll look at how to train that and the neuroscience that matches this third mode of being in the world. So first, let's look at doing mode. So there are different ways of dividing up the brain networks, but I've found a paper that makes a lot of sense to me. So that's what we'll talk about in this video. And what I'm calling doing mode is associated with the task positive network. This includes the dorsal attention network, as well as the ventral attention network. So dorsal attention would be top down, like choosing where to pay attention. You know, let's say you decided, I'm going to look for that hawk's nest in the distance. That would be your dorsal attention network. Ventral attention network means something catches your attention that you didn't intend to pay, pay attention to. Like all of a sudden there's a noise and your attention goes over there to figure out what it is. Also part of this task positive network is the somatomotor network the SSN, which readies the brain for motor tasks like tapping your fingers. So that makes sense. All three of these, it has to do with paying attention to things in the external world and engaging with them. The second mode that we talked about is this thinking mode, which has been associated with the default mode network. And this is a network of brain areas that are active when we're idle, when we're so-called doing nothing, or actually the brain kind of defaults towards thinking and imagination, and also a lot of needless worry, a lot of worries about things we should do or wish we had done better. So the default mode network can kind of take us to a different time and place in a, in a virtual simulation machine. And we often don't realize that we're in the simulation. It's a kind of daydream. But this is also useful for planning and remembering things. So it's not all bad. It's just that an overactive default mode network has been linked to various mental health disorders. And it's also linked to negative mood states and craving and rumination and distraction. So if the default mode network gets overactive, it can be a problem. The default mode network uses about 20% of our metabolic energy. And that's just 5% less than when we're really engaged in solving a difficult problem. So just thinking, just when someone says do nothing, just sit there, that's using 20% of our energy. So all day long, we're often toggling between these two doing mode, either paying attention somewhere in the outside world, absorbed in a task, or if we're just kind of idling and there's nothing of interest in the outside world that's captured our attention, then attention's focused inwards on our thoughts. And that's the thinking mode, the default mode network. Now, these automatic programs aren't bad. They're actually efficient. The brain is trying to do things efficiently. And so it runs certain scripts about, you know, when it sees this, react this way. And if not, you know, find the most worrisome thing to think about and try to solve that problem internally. The problem is that when we're not aware of this process, it can be very maladaptive. We can waste a lot of energy and a lot of cognitive resources and basically wear ourselves out thinking or performing habit patterns that we would rather not engage in. If much of our day is spent living on autopilot and toggling between doing mode and thinking mode, then how much decision do we really have in our lives? We're kind of being led along by these programs that are playing out subconscious scripts from previous reactions to the world and and this doesn't give us much choice in the kind of lives that we want to lead and here comes the third mode that gives us a lot of freedom and that is 
what's called the frontoparietal network. And it's this key mental muscle we've been training in this course called meta-awareness. So meta-awareness has been linked to the frontoparietal network. And it seems like this allows enhanced connection between the other major networks in the brain. It can monitor and integrate a flexible shift between these other networks and allow us to pay attention where we want so we could think thoughts, we could be aware of our thoughts without being sucked into them. In other words, we could decide to consciously imagine or problem solve, but then we might choose not to worry about something and instead direct our attention towards the beautiful sunset in front of us. It's basically what gives us the some semblance of control over our minds. This is also useful when we have a lot going on in our lives. So let's say you're trying to drive while also talk to your friend and you want to be present for your friend in that conversation, but also pay attention, pay enough attention to the road where it's safe. In this case, it seems the frontoparietal network would come online to help us be aware, kind of like stepping outside of the mind for a moment and just choosing where we want to, how much attention do we give to the road? How much attention do we give to our friend? It gives us that sense of flexibility. And the frontoparietal network has also been linked to what's called lucid dreaming, where someone becomes aware that they're dreaming inside of a dream. And this is part of the evidence that it relates to meta-awareness, this ability to observe our minds. Meta-awareness is the main skill that we're training in the meditation practice. In fact, there's over 300 different types of meditation, and all of them, I would say, either all of them or almost all of them use some type of meta-awareness, because it's this ability to become aware of our minds that, that we're training that I would say almost defines a meditation practice. And then you can choose like what to pay attention to or what qualities of mind to train. But there was an interesting neuroscience study on 22 experienced Tibetan Buddhist meditators. And it found that indeed they were able to balance out the first two networks that I talked about, the default mode network and the task positive network, which are normally anti-correlated. In other words, one, one is active and the other goes offline. So like, you know, you're either engaged in the external world or you're lost in your thoughts. There's no, it's one or the other. But it found that there was less of this anti-correlation when the meditators were in a state of non-dual awareness. In other words, they were, well, the instruction in the study was to, quote, rest in reflexive non-dual awareness, equally aware of inside and outside of your body allowing experiences to arise and subside of their own accord. So the fact that the task positive network, the doing mode, and the default mode network, the thinking mode, were not competing with each other suggests in this study that maybe the frontoparietal network and their, the meta-awareness that, that was being cultivated in this practice allowed the two to come into a more harmonious balance so that agrees with meditator reports that like somebody could be aware of their thoughts while they're thinking them and also be doing something and there's just kind of this awareness of everything that's happening in the mind without getting completely lost in one or the other that's a skill we can train with practice and in fact this kind of mental flexibility to be able to skillfully and consciously toggle between which modes of being we want to be in is, I think, a, a key skill that you develop as you train the mind. So like we could use thoughts when we need them. And then if we didn't need to be thinking a lot, we might just be in kind of a being mode and just sit there resting, enjoying, or we might decide that we want to, you know, pay attention to a beautiful view in front of us and pay less attention to our thoughts. And so in this way, there's kind of this ability to not so much try to control or eliminate thoughts, but just use them as tools and likewise use our attention as a tool rather than having it kind of dragged around to whatever seems most important biologically to our, you know, attention camera. We, we have this broader awareness, the meta-awareness enabled by the frontal parietal network that gives us some semblance of broader control over the system. Though this is theoretical, 
there has been a study where the results indicated that after one month of mindfulness meditation training, there was increased interconnectivity between the major networks in the brain. And a meta-analysis found that mindfulness training, when compared to control groups, had increased cross-network connectivity. So whether this exact theory is right or not, it does seem like the brain is just becoming more generally integrated. So as always, I'll try to tie this back to the four R's, which are our main kind of mental bicep curls that we're doing here to train the mind. And we do so by first recognizing when we're caught up in one of these two modes of being, either thinking mode or doing mode. And when we do so, this gives us a chance to release. We release our attention into this broader meta-awareness where we can now be aware of our thoughts and what we're doing and we're not completely fixated on some part of our experience. And then we can relish. We can relish in this kind of balanced meta-awareness and remain, remain with it as long as we can until inevitably we get caught in doing mode or thinking mode and then we just use the four R's again. In this way we're training the mind to have more awareness and we're changing our lives because that awareness is used throughout the day to make positive and wholesome decisions. So the daily challenge today is to at least once to, to recognize and when you're in thinking mode or doing mode, and then shift gears into this kind of being mode into the frontoparietal network. And I'll see you tomorrow for another day of meditation, science, and bliss.